When it comes to living life, there's a lot to overthink, but I don't ever have to overthink my water. I've been drinking smart water for years and truly love its pure, crisp taste. It's vapor distilled through a process inspired by clouds. I love chic branding and smart water sleek bottle shape makes it the perfect accessory for any day bag, workout tote, or backpack. Smart water is the smart way to hydrate no matter what you have going on in your life. Life is full of choices. Smart water is a simple one. Visit drinksmartwater.com to learn more. Hear that? Yeah, that's the sound of you relaxing because now you're managing diabetes with the Freestyle Libre 3 system. You get to know your glucose levels and where it's headed. Manage your diabetes with more confidence with the Freestyle Libre 3 system. Ready to learn more about the number one prescribed CGM in the U.S.? Visit freestylelibre.us to learn more. Based on retail sales data for patients last full prescription by manufacturer. Refer to the Flare NL4 study published in BMJ Open Diabetes Research and Care 2019. Safety info found at freestylelibre.us. I'm Carissa Thompson from Calm Down with Aaron and Carissa. Aaron, you know I love me an Airbnb one time. In fact, I rented a house right on the beach because I had looked at hotel rates for the hotel right on the beach, and it was astronomical. Eesh. I got the whole house for the weekend to celebrate my birthday. It was amazing. Chris and my family these days, we are traveling deep. We've got the baby. We've got the dogs. We've got the nanny. We need the space. And that's what Airbnb provides. More rooms, actually a kitchen, bathrooms. It has us covered. It just makes more sense for our life right now in traveling. It's so good. And what else I love, Aaron, about it, they've got this thing called Guest Favorites feature. It's a collection of some of Airbnb's most loved homes based on reviews and reliability. So they take the guesswork out of it, just making it so simple to decide, oh, that's a perfect Airbnb. It's reliable. It's a great review, great location. So check out the places that other people have loved now on Airbnb, especially the Guest Favorites. Woo-woo. Hi, everyone. I'm Rachel Zoe. And I'm Roger Berman. And you're listening to Works Works for for Us, Us. where we talk to people about what works for them in their relationships and, of course, what doesn't. Okay, so this week we're celebrating love because this week is Valentine's Day and also the month of our anniversary. I know we already celebrated our anniversary of just being together in August, but this is our actual factual wedding anniversary month. But anyway, we want to talk about our love and hear about our listeners' love. So let's dive in. Also, Rachel, as I recall, I think you were conveniently sick the last time we recorded an anniversary episode and I had to do it alone, if I'm not mistaken. Oh my God, I was like deathly ill. That's right. I'm I'm thrilled to to welcome you to your actual anniversary episode with your actual husband. Good times. Mm. You know, I'm in love with myself, so it was totally fine to do it alone. Ugh, I'm muting you anyway. So let's just start off with some questions that you didn't address in your solo episode. Mary, um, can you ask us some new questions? Sure. I mean, aren't you guys excited to have a third wheel on your anniversary episode? Isn't this just magical? Just the three of us. I mean, you've been our third wheel for about nine years now. You can't get rid of me. Listen, Gelman. Just just the three of us. (laughs) together forever do i have these questions anywhere you do you do you don't have to you don't i'm gonna ask them you can relax um gelman's oh. i'm seeing relax. this gelman oh i mean God. mary i mean she's Emmy. so hungry you can relax I mean, M- M- emmy did you why her did you make this episode <laughs> by the way did, why did you make this whole episode about you when it's about us well you know there's a, enough room in the spotlight for all of us Roger, <laughs> this doesn't so work for us i'm just taking a corner of it fine um proceed so, For any of our new listeners who haven't listened to your pilot episode, we encourage them to because they'll get your full backstory. And you guys did share a lot about your actual wedding in that episode. God, that seems like so long ago. I know. It was long ago. So (laughs) if you haven't listened to that, please do because it'll give you more insight into Rachel and Roger. But I wanted to ask you some questions that we didn't cover about your actual wedding. Okay. So you're going to have to put your thinking caps on because you're celebrating, what, 24 years? 24 years okay. married, 30 together. Okay. So one thing we did not talk about was the night before the wedding. I feel like there's been a lot of great rom-coms and TV shows built around what happens the night before the wedding. And I actually have no idea what you guys did. Was there a rehearsal dinner? Was there drinking? No, Was there- I remember the night before... The wedding. Let's see if let's see if we actually remember this the same way because I kind of do. I okay. Well, I do, I remember what I did. I'm pretty sure that I was. I'm pretty sure that you might have stayed at the hotel or something. So I, I went up to see you 
I said goodbye because we were not going to be together the night before the wedding. Right. I was like adamant about that. Right. That was like all of a sudden I was being traditional. Yeah. So then I remember (laughs) I went home. Um, I just, I actually did nothing. I remember distinctly, I lit candles, put on the Grateful Dead. As you would. Entertained myself with a drink or whatever. And calmed yourself, calmed myself and just really reflected. I I remember that very vividly. I kind of just meditated, actually. I mean, not, like before it was cool to meditate, not, you know, not formal meditation, but I was just like, you know, I knew it was like a big life moment. And I just literally like lit a couple of candles, put the Grateful Dead on. And I just remember just hanging out by myself. That's what I did the night before. I'm shook. OK, so here's the I thing. I didn't have anyone around me. One thing. That's I, cool. So one thing I want to point out is that our wedding I was really adamant, being that I have a husband that likes to enjoy himself. I was really adamant. A big peeve of mine is the night before the wedding. And I think from being a stylist and having clients like kind of go out the night before the Oscars and the night I see how like banged out people can be for the like big day. And I always like kind of was confused by that big night prior to the wedding, the rehearsal dinner, because it's sort of like... You're literally getting hung over before, like mentally, physically, it doesn't matter before it all starts. So what we did, and I remember really like fighting my mom on it. I didn't want a rehearsal dinner the night before the wedding. I wanted it two nights before the wedding. Oh, that's actually advice. I feel like it was. We did it at the Bowery Bar. Yes, but wasn't our wedding actually on a Sunday because it was Monday was off because it was President's Weekend. It was a holiday weekend. It was a holiday weekend. It was this weekend. President's Weekend. So actually our Friday night was the rehearsal dinner. Correct. At the Bowery. And our wedding was Sunday. At the Bowery. At the Bowery Bar. At the Bowery Bar. Nice. We and did then you not want Saturday a traditional. Off. We didn't. Yeah. Want well, a- Saturday, everyone like got to hang out in the city. People out of town. They just had a day off, and then like Sunday wedding time. So we it was cool. didn't want to do. Roger and I were like young, fun New Yorkers, like living our best life, and we were like, oh, we're not having a traditional wedding. We were like dinner. annoyed we were, like, that we let's had. Let's our- do a party like, at the Bowery. Bar. Like we were annoyed that we had our own wedding on our weekend. <laughs> we're like, ugh. <laughs> You're like, oh, isn't there a wedding we have to go to on Sunday? Yeah, so like, annoying. By the way, so don't laugh. Formal. Rachel's mom planned the whole goddamn thing. I know. No, we had really. no interest. She told us. It was hilarious. <laughs> so she just, has good taste, thank God. Thank God. Look beautiful. You Thanks, guys, Liz. so you followed tradition and you guys did not see each other. Then the actual until night Until you before. walked down the One aisle. One of friends slept over with you so or what I did, or your sister did. What I did was we did the rehearsal dinner, which I was hung on. <laughs> The next day, actually, because it was really fun. Um, And then on Saturday, I was very nervous. I was more nervous, not about getting married, but actually about like in typical me fashion. Like, are people coming? Is everything going to go wrong? I was worried that Roger's family was going to be upset about the shellfish. There was like so much anxiety about things um, going wrong. And, you know... Um, I do remember just being very anxious the night before and I got, had this big, beautiful suite at the hotel and I believe my sister, Melissa, Emily, and I think Debbie Debbie Bosniak, um, all slept over in my room and we all just like had a, had like a girl's sleepover and it was really fun. We just stayed in robes. We got room service, but I was like a nervous wreck. I was definitely not at all a calm chill but you were not bride. Bride, but you were not bridezilla at all no 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 i she was wasn't actually she was, was more in her own world like rach you there she's like uh, uh, like she's just she's a little more it's like how she is before like a curator event yes. she's very like anxious about everything yes. going off at the right time yes. like my fashion show and she but, checks yeah. she's a checker yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. did, you do, the, did you do that like literally you just asked me that the like seating that kind of chart thought. for your wedding must okay. have been an oh my God. absolute it was, nightmare it was a but here's the thing about our wedding So here's the thing about weddings, especially if you get married young like we did. The wedding is actually for your parents. Totally. Because at one point, Roger and I were like, hey, mom and dad, we want to go to St. Bart's or something and have our wedding. Yeah, we just wanted to have a wedding And my dad said to me, not a chance. And I said, why? He said, you're my daughter. I'm giving you away. And it's going to be in front of everyone that I know. And I love, and they will be there. What you do after your wedding is up to you. So we went to St. Parts. <laughs> so we went to St. Parts for our honeymoon. Perfect. But, perfect. So, well, we tr- wanted to incorporate it both. We're like, honestly, that way they're like, get rid of the riffraff. There'll be like 60 people, 80 right. people maybe in St. Parts, and we would have a party. But here was the thing. But- here was the thing. 
ultimately, I do have the best parents in the world. And ultimately, it is for your parents and their friends. And like when you're close, I think with your family, it's like this, it's that thing. They're giving you away and like the whole thing. And so to that end, I was already a workaholic. And I said to my mom, I have no time to do this. Here's like, yes, I love the rainbow room. Let's do it. I want Preston Bailey to do the flowers. The rest is up to you. I literally, and I didn't do anything. Oh, I tried on my band. I tried on my dress band. three weeks before the wedding. Yeah, we picked the band though. Speaking of fashion, I don't know this. What did your bridesmaids' dresses look like? I have no oh. idea. I think they were navy, right? No, no, they were black. So black. Okay. I was dark. determined I to do dark. a non bridal dress. Bridal dress. Rachel, you, I remember you being like, it's so ridiculous for bridesmaids to have to wear a dress once. I'm going to do black bridesmaids dress and make them really chic and they can wear them again. That's By the, so I nice think that's of what you, you said. I, it is I thought they were navy though. No, for some but here's the other were they thing. Were going to be navy no. at one point? No. So okay. here's the thing. We were getting married in the rainbow room. And because of that, and we were using four rooms in the rainbow room. And I said to Roger, I want this to just be full on deco glamour like new york city winter so i said is it insane to do black velvet gowns yeah, and velvet. gloves and black velvet gloves and the girls were so happy and also they comfortable felt, because it's freezing out in yeah, february and they so they're felt, in velvet dresses it's nice and they felt beautiful and i will say this roger's exactly right i thought i think it is so unfair that brides pick their dress, the dresses for the bridesmaids. And like, they will not, it's like it's 27 dresses, it's, right? It's so true. And so I was determined that if they're going to spend money to wear them again, and they actually not only wore them again, but I remember like two years later, one of my girlfriends being like, this is my 15th time wearing this dress. Yeah, I remember Because it was that. a perfect like little black well, dress. Was yeah. it Was it from a, do you remember where you got it from? Um, I'm trying to think of the designer. I want to say it was Vera Wang Bridesmaid. Wasn't it? I think so. Something, it was I think something, it was actually. I don't know. Anyway, what That's else do you want to ask us? Now I want to know this. Skip to the reception. Cake cutting. You cut a cake, yes? <laughs> we did. I, we almost forgot. I think we, we did cut we a did. cake. We did. I distinctly remember putting cake in, in Rachel's mouth. mouth. Okay, so you didn't do the smash cake thing. No, no that's I would like literally cut that's just, okay. that's just. Thank I mean, you. I was going to. It's a little decasse with the rainbow room, for God's sake. I, I was think I gave her like the nice. No, I gave her like that. the nice, like, you know, more like, hey, baby, like, here's a little cake. Yeah. And she was like, um, you know, it was more like that. Got it. Okay. Like the start of a Roger beautiful friendship. Roger found it like a sexy moment instead yeah. of like a bride eats the cake. Right, exactly. It's like a start of a beautiful. <laughs> He's like, I want to feed my wife cake. Right. It's, it's like start of a beautiful friendship. Yeah. Yeah. We know where that goes. Yeah. Um, Did we talk about the alone moment after the ceremony? No. Did I ever tell you about that? No. There was one piece of advice that um, mm -hmm. a friend gave us. Like, oh, who, do you remember who it was? I, it's funny. I can't remember. It might have been Barry. I feel like it was Barry. Barry Watson. So I think Barry Watson, some of you may know him, um, very handsome actor, um, but he was one of our witnesses to our wedding. And um, he signed our New York state license. He signed license. Our, our New York state license. But anyway, I believe it was him that told us that no matter what the chaos is at your wedding, and I now tell this to my friends getting married, no matter what the chaos is before, during the wedding, whatever it is, after you do your vows, Go into the room, whatever room it is, pick your room and spend 10 minutes together. Just looking at each other, taking 10 minutes to yourself to like calm, realize what just happened take and then moment. go out and take a billion pictures. And, and like you else. go out together, like united. It's just very yeah. nice as opposed to because what could happen is it the ends, chaos. then you go right into a picture. It's like it's nuts and you literally don't have you, you don't have the wedding to yourself. And as it turns out and everyone has this experience you know, at their own wedding, you know, it goes very quickly. Yes, You're like, oh, I didn't so even, quick. oh, I only saw that person for two seconds. You know, it's like Ours the did end at 4 a.m. though. Yeah, I mean, so we had an after party at the Rainbow Room. In the like our party, room. I think our, it was a little late. Our wedding was like seven. No, it was early. Five? It was early. It was like started at five and ended at four in the morning. Yeah, well, five, but the, but the, you know, by the time you get it out, there's like five thirty, five forty five. Cocktails were like six-ish to seven. Your family first online for Shellfish Bar? Obviously. Obviously, Rachel, after that whole biggest fight we ever got into, biggest fight we ever got into this day. You know, day. one of the best attributes that I love about my wife. I don't has, let things go. She, no, she has an amazing memory. <laughs> she does. Good, bad. I also don't let things go. Indifferent. Well, that's you saying that, Rach. Yeah, I was I just up to my thing. Merely complimenting you on your memory. 
I'm used to making great styling recommendations, but now that I'm a podcaster, I'm ready to give fantastic podcast recommendations. And I'm telling you, you need to be listening to Here's Exactly What to Do by Mel Robbins on Audible. Mel Robbins, a best-selling global phenomenon and one of the leading voices in personal development, is back with a new Audible original podcast, Here's Exactly What to Do, which invites you to reimagine the life you want and gives you the tools to take action. Each of the 14 episodes focuses on an attitude or situation that's holding you back. Is your confidence in need of a recharge? Is your creativity running low? Are you not carving out the right life balance? Or are you just feeling blah and can't get out of bed? In her typical no bullshit style, Mel cuts through the hype to deliver the simple tools you need to move forward and create positive change. These short, impactful episodes are the perfect way to take a break, take a breath, and feel truly empowered. Here's exactly what to do is the perfect follow-up to start here, her 13-topic breakdown of how to deal with whatever life is throwing at you. It's available on Audible, so go to audible.com slash what to do to listen today. Mary, um, what else do we got? Speeches. Who gave toasts at your reception and how were they? Best friend Daryl. Best friend Daryl. Ronnie friends. did. Your father did. My dad sure. was beautiful. I feel like my dad did too. Okay. We got to look. I'd do we have a video? Somewhere. That was going to be my next question. Was there a videographer? There definitely was. I think we have. For sure. Well, where would it be? We don't even know where a wedding video My dad is. has it. No, he definitely doesn't. Definitely does. Mary, do I you th- remember someone rolling yes. a camera? Oh, we definitely had a video. Yeah, before. okay. But okay. we have photos. No, but we need... I need the video. I I'd like to see, to see we the video. We have the video, and I'm going to gonna tell you it. how I know that we have the video. How? Because my dad came to us a year later, <laughs> the guy who took the video, and said, I have the video. And we were like, let's watch it. And we literally have a tape. A cassette. Where? We'll have to convert Not it. Not a cassette tape, but a... Yeah. Where? We like need, a beta, uh, what's it called? The oh, beta. In our, VHS. Yeah, in, in VHS. This, hold on, in this vis- physical house, we have it? Uh, probably in one of the bins. We have it. If not, my dad has it. But long story short is we do have one. We and need to we get it converted it. digitally now. I, think I would started, love to watch it now. We have to do I a think screening. We started watching it and I went up in the chair and I just stopped watching it after that because I was like, I can't. Oh my god. I was like, why I, didn't I, I take my veil off? Oh my god, I want to see young bride. <laughs> now Rachel. I have to see it. Oh my god, and I'll be obsessed, man. Okay, I'll help That's you find it. Mission. I'm gonna help you find it. I cut it. bangs and got a henna tattoo up to my shoulder a week before my wedding. It was so good. It was why? Because I was just that dumb to our she was blacked out. I literally think out of complete panic and anxiety, you just do stupid things and I and drank too much bangs. at a fashion party and the henna tattoo that started on my fingertip ended up to my shoulder and I I woke up with saran wrap wrapped around my arm she's with like, a henna tattoo. She's like, what is this? And I'm like, henna tattoo. And then, she's like, I'm and getting married out. on Friday, like Sunday. And this was like the weekend before. It's so out of character. I can't. It's, it's so It's a movie. Of- I also cut bangs, which really on my wedding day haunted my soul. And to this day, when you pull up wedding pictures to post, all I do is see bangs pulled over to the side like I was in Little House on the Prairie or something. It's just dreadful. Hey, listen, Laura. I mean, <laughs> and brunette bangs at that. I, can't, you know, I was gonna I say. just can't. I look like Caius. Okay, this is the last one, and then we're going to move on, and we're going to hear from some of our listeners. A little message, and then, then some questions for okay. you guys. But this is to substantiate oh, no. Roger's solo oh, no. anniversary episode about your proposal. Oh, God. So... She's going to deny it. Roger stated that. I didn't. You said, thank God I got a manicure before you said yes when he asked you to marry him. True or false? False. Rachel, why false. would you lie? Because what did it's you say? not true. Okay, what did you say? I do remember someone like making a lot of noise in a boat and I was really hungover and I couldn't figure out. I didn't like the place we were standing so we kept relocating on the dock because that was annoying uh, and my but, heels were getting stuck. Yeah, so I'll own we, up to that. Then when we got to the place and I proposed, you looked down and I swear to God, the first thing you said to me and I reminded you of it right afterwards. I was like, you said... Oh my God, thank God I got a manicure this week. And I said, Does that mean yes? And you're like, Yes. <laughs> I remember it distinctly. I'm going to say no. 
Oh, what then do you okay? What do you remember doing then? She does sweetheart? not recall. Do you I recall just being like, Yes, you're the love out, of my like, life? I couldn't believe this was happening. Okay, and do you remember just thinking, it was like, so Yes, romantic. I said yes. It was so romantic. You drove into like three of the wrong parking lots chasing they the sunset. The wrong parking lots, Aww. they just weren't appropriate for the love of my life. And Aww. so then yeah. we parked, and he was like, Let's take a walk. I was like, I'm tired, I don't want to go. She was so grumpy. I was so cranky. He threw me the most amazing. Amazing surprise birthday party the night before. Can My you fault. not propose to me in the future after you throw me a party? Thanks. My fault. Um, it still sounds magical. Okay, so I guess. So I'm going to say that. It's a I, mystery of the universe. I think I, that we should have a, a, a listener poll to, to think who's telling the truth. So this yeah. is what Courtney I think. Win. I think I turned around. He was on the ground. He asked me to marry him. I said yes. And then I stared at the ring because it was so beautiful. And I, the first thing that went through my head was you can't afford this. And glad you didn't say that. <laughs> right. And and I just remember like staring at my hand. And then after I do remember the first thing that came out after I said yes. There was no yes. Was like staring at it and going, oh, thank God I got a manicure. So, OK. So I did say that. I just think I said yes. It was first. the first sentence out of her mouth. So maybe she's like, yes, thank God I got it. Like, but I don't. I may even give that to her, okay. even though I don't want to rewrite okay. history because that's actually not what happened. But <laughs> even assuming that did happen, I admit to saying that on the dock within seconds of saying. Okay, so within she seconds, admits. she admits. All right, so okay. we can move on. We can move on. Okay, mystery solved. We are going to listen to a message from a listener now. That's very sweet. Hey, Rachel and Roger, this is Sherry um, from Bemidji, Minnesota. I just wanted to congratulate you guys on 30 years together. Way to go. That's awesome. That's a big deal. We have just celebrated our 40th anniversary, uh, and it's amazing. I am thankful to be married to my best friend. I sometimes wonder how I got some, so lucky or blessed. And part of it, I think, is, is he's such a wonderful person, and I got very, very lucky, and part of it is we're committed. So no matter what, we're going to work through it. So that works for us. We were just very fortunate to be able to take a special once-in-a-lifetime trip to Italy to celebrate our 40th anniversary. We just got back. It was amazing. It's kind of like the rest of our married life. We go through adventures together. I can't think of anyone else I'd rather do that with than my best friend, Gary. Um, and during the, our trip, seeing all these wonderful places like Venice and Florence and Cinque Terre, Rome and Montepulciano, we run into wonderful, beautiful people, sites, history, art, food, wine, etc., and get to share that and enjoy that with each other. It's amazing. But we also run into troubles like missing trains and getting locked out of our apartment at midnight and Venice and getting lost in Venice and various other things. But, you know, we always work it out. Uh, somehow we always get through it. I'm just really thankful to have someone that I can um, know will help me get through things in life. Life is challenging. So that's what works for us, that commitment, that sense of adventure, uh, just being blessed beyond words. Uh, thank you for your program. And... Talk to you later. Bye. What a cutie. Oh, my goodness. Did you say she's from Michigan? <laughs> she's from Minnesota. Minnesota. Oh, Minnesota. Her name's Sherry. Minnesota. Yeah, 40 years. What a sweetie. Well, I, you know, I think the salient point about that um, message was that, you know, it's about commitment. Commitment to good, commitment to bad. That's what but, Jake was saying, if but, you remember. Yeah, but just, just, you know, commitment to the future together, whatever that is. Not running. Uh, not running. And we say it time and time again. You know, if your first in instinct is like fight or flight, <laughs> you know, that's not good because you got to fight together as one. And I love the story that 40 years later, they go on a dream um, vacation. But if you notice what she said, which was so much more interesting, she didn't say like, oh, we have a possession or like we have a great house or a great, you know, what she said is we were able to travel together and share like... She, like they probably met some cool people and, and they didn't have to to tell their someone at home, oh, I met this cool person. They like experienced together 
with the person that she loves. So it's really, I think it's quite profound how she put it. So thank you um, for that call. I'm inspired. So I almost, sweet. I mean, I almost cried. but that's, You always cry. Honey. Yeah, obviously. Very sweet. Okay, now we're going to, we have a question from a younger listener for you guys. So okay. I'm going to play that now for you. There's nothing better than curling up on the couch and watching a great mystery thriller, especially if you have someone to snuggle up to. Honestly, sometimes that and a good blanket is all you need for a perfect date night in. And if you're looking for a good mystery thriller recommendation, I know exactly what you should watch next. And that's Spectrum Originals, Angela Black. And you can binge all of the episodes for free on demand on Spectrum now. It's a new character-driven six-part psychological thriller following Angela Black, a woman whose reality is upended when she's approached by a mysterious man carrying an ominous warning. Nothing is as it seems as she tries to save herself and her children from danger, leading Angela to doubt everything she thought she knew, including her own mind. This show is perfect for fans who like a gripping mystery thriller like Gone Girl, Girl on the Train, The Undoing, Sharp Objects. I'm telling you, this series stars actors we have all loved. Golden Globe winner Joanne Froggett, who played Anna Bates in Downton Abbey, Michelle McKeelushman from The Flight Attendant, and British Independent Film Award winner Samuel Adunmi from The Hatton Garden Job and The Last Tree. The minute I saw the Angela Black trailer, I knew I'd binge the entire series. It's one of those shows that just totally sucks you in, and I cannot recommend it enough. I'm telling you, you have to start watching Angela Black today. Binge all of the episodes for free on demand on Spectrum now. That's Spectrum Originals, Angela Black. Hi, Rachel and Roger. Um, I'm 23 years old, and I just got out of a five-year relationship a few months ago, and I want to get back into the dating world. I was wondering, like, what's your advice for dating during COVID times? I'm kind of sick of the apps, and I was wondering what you think I should do to find my soulmate. Uh, thank you so much. I actually have a lot of thoughts on that because I've been spending a lot of time with people who – have gotten out of relationships, have gotten out of marriages, have um, just gotten back into life again post-COVID. Um, and I think for me, the one thing that always is a consistent piece of advice that I like to give to women, um, it's like stop searching for it and stop having the idea in your mind of what things should be. Um, because I think that for guys, a big repellent is that girl sitting and waiting for the guy and that girl sitting like, where is my next Romeo? Where is my soulmate? I'm on a search for my soulmate because it's like that movie that I've watched a million times. He's just not that into you. I think the minute that you put down the search, the obvious search I think that men just come on it. Like you're, you're, I do think also, I do want to say something for someone who's been so skeptical of dating apps. I cannot tell you how many people in my life that I respect have met their soulmates on dating apps. So I am here to say I have not used them, but I am a huge advocate well, for that. Well, didn't you use that Madison one? I what? <laughs> What Shut up. Called? No, I think it would be you that, using the I'm Madison pretty, one. By the way, babe, I'm pretty sure there wasn't it. even an app alive when we met. So no, no, no it exists now. I actually sweetie. haven't the gone on a date in over 30 years, but here's the thing. That we know of. I really, really, really believe, don't knock the apps. I think there are some really great ones out there. I think Hinge, I think Bumble, just to name a few, but I have incredible couple. women and men in my life that have used them and have had tremendous success. Um, but I don't think that's the only way. And I really think that going outside of your comfort circle is lovely um, and and really effective sometimes because sometimes you just know everyone. Yeah, I think that I think my advice and I know it sounds like I'm an old man, which I am, but like do something you may not think to do join a like a random club a cooking right. class like something dumb something like you could just spend time doing but for yourself but something for yourself something unexpected i agree with rachel's advice there's nothing more unappealing to a man than a woman who like wants a man <laughs> because you could just tell it's just like a certain energy so what i would say is 
do, do things for yourself. Do things for you, like improve yourself. Right. Like, wait, I want to like get fit. I want to do whatever it is that you want to do. I want to start at, running or hiking at, or, or education or whatever it is. I want to learn wanna a foreign do. language. Yeah. Do those things for you. And as you embark on those things that are I improving agree. your life, you'll become more attractive to men. I think. I agree. I 100% agree. Good advice. Agree. Good advice. Mm-hmm. Okay. We have one more question. I'm going to play for you guys. Hi, Rachel and Roger. My name is Athena. I was actually calling with a question for you. Um, my husband and I have been married for 11 years, and we have three children um, that we had pretty close together. Um, they're actually around the same age as your boys. And uh, my husband works long, long hours. I know Rachel has worked long hours over her career. Um, he works around 90 hours a week, doesn't get much time off ever. And I currently work in autistic support with students who have autism spectrum disorder um, in the classroom. So I'm gone all day. And I was just wondering how you balance your work life, family life, and time with each other, um, especially with kids that are the same age right now as we have and activities and um, Hebrew school and sports and all the things. how you balance all of that. And yeah, but I just, I love your show so much. I really enjoy listening. Um, I love hearing all those couple stories, especially um, when you had Rachel's parents on. I love hearing from people that have been through it and um, have a lot of advice to give. And yeah, so I really appreciate you guys. I really enjoy listening every week. It's a great um, time to relax and just learn um so yes that was my question but thank you so much i'm really enjoying the podcast and i appreciate everything that you share with us okay first of all you're so cute and second of all thank you for the question and it's a very very commonly asked question that i answer relatively the same most of the time but i i will say from my standpoint um there are not enough hours in the day to be an extremely hands-on parent and work your ass off, right? But we do it. And I think for me, the thing that really is sacrificed is personal time. And I'm okay with that. Because the way I look at it is my kids are going to be old enough soon where they don't need me that much. And I'm just holding on to every second of it because I live for it. Um, I would say that the gift that Roger and I don't take for granted is that we work together And so we don't have to be apart. And when people ask us, how do you work together? How do you parent together? How do you this? The good news is, is that if we didn't, I'd literally never see him. Yeah, I actually would never see him. And, you know, (laughs) regarding this caller and, you know, obviously the the things that, you know, you, you could prescribe to like balance, first of all, the reality is, is if your husband's really working 90 hours, and assume he has one day off, hopefully, he's still working 15 hours a day and he's got to sleep. So like, I'm not totally sure how he gives proper attention to the three kids and to you. Well, my guess is she's doing most of that. No, but but I think her question was, how do you (laughs) do the balance? And I think the reality reality is, is I think that, I think that they're, you know, maybe try to figure out, you know, I used to work 90 hours a week when I was a banker, right? But not anymore. So I think, I just think that ultimately, if that's the amount of time that one of the two of you is spending at their profession, again, like Rachel mentioned, we're lucky that we do work a lot, but we do work a lot together. So, you know, there's interaction, but it, I I just think that's, I think that's hard to, I think what I'm hearing is it's hard to put, it's hard to continue because I, I, I personally think that's somewhat unsustainable for a long period, like long term. Well, it's just, you know? it would actually be physically impossible if he's working 90 hours a week to give even proper time hours. to even his wife hours. and three kids, which is not his fault. He clearly wants and needs to well, work this hard right now. But, well, we don't know the situation, right. but I think, the, I, think, I think it would be hard to say, hey, here's a great advice for work-life balance when mm-hmm. one of the two people literally doesn't have enough time to have the balance, right? Right, but I think to that point, I think it's important to use whatever time you have wisely go on a date and you have to have date night you have to have all that you're just first off i also want to say i love your profession and i admire it and it's never been more important than it is right now so kudos to you for what you do agree um but i would say that look and roger would admit this i mean i would say that 
you know, I definitely handle most 90% of our personal life and Roger does probably more of our work life and I work very hard, but different than I did before children. So I think the advantage of what we do is that it is our company and we can give and take and figure out who's doing kids, who's being here and whatever. But I think ultimately my advice to you would be to sit with your husband and really say, hey, like, is there a world in which you can work 10 hours less? Because I would love a few of those hours and so would the kids. Um, And I think it's important that you have at least one date night a week. For sure. Right? And then, you know, I think until he maybe can work less, you know, you're probably steering the ship, you know, as the mom, you know, and I think, listen, I, it's not the first that's the case. My guess is that you probably need to, uh, you know, lean on your girlfriends more. Right. right. And, 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 you know, because I do think, I don't know, I, I would say that I think most of a lot of moms are steering the kidship. I don't want to, I think the times are changing and I think it's more balanced now than it's ever been. But I think, you know, it is a very common thing, that, a situation that we find ourselves in. So just go with it and enjoy it. Okay. So we will end your anniversary episode. I will ask you each the same question. Roger. Yes, darling. Would you marry Rachel again? Well, the answer is, is definitely yes. But I need to frame the situation. Like, I would love to be, like, younger again and, like, have, like, young Rachel again and young Roger and, like, do it all over, if that makes sense. Okay. Because it's hard for me to, like, I don't, it's, like, only Rachel, so I'm not going to be single and marrying someone at 53, so I wouldn't be marrying Rachel now. But, yeah, this is my girl. And I Rachel? wouldn't marry anyone else. Yeah. Would you marry Roger okay. Good again? Ending. Good no, ending. but Good sweetie, ending. The point, he landed it. He landed it. Okay. No, no. I was just trying to figure it that out. It was like out. a fucking trip. Dude, it was a triple axel exit. Come on. It wasn't though. What do you mean? Oh, I'm good at that. I feel that. like that kind of sucked. It was a dismount. Dismount. Rachel, mm. would you marry Roger again? You know, I've been trying to marry him again from our tenure. Our 15 year, our 20 year. So, baby, get ready for February 15th, 2023. And by the way, Bel Air so Hotel, baby. So, I guess I'm going to re answer that question. The answer <laughs> is no, I will not, will not marry Rachel again. Because I, okay, I'm going to say it once and say it finally. Okay, but here's the thing I already married you once when I give my word. He I refuses mean it. to do a vow renewal. Oh, I just why want would I do my vows again? My know. first vows are so we're gonna s- do- totally intact. It's like, why spend the legal fees? You I know? don't remember that. The first that. vows are intact. I don't well, would you ever you not actually renew? Would you just do the party? 100%. Okay, we're okay. going to do a party and we're going to write Party words. toast, but I ain't doing a vow again. Okay. And getting married again. I I'm respect already, that. I'm he's going to write a toast and some words that Whatever. are not official vows. He's really good if at If there isn't an official rabbi there, by the way, it's not getting married. Again, there's getting married is a real... Is, there's an actual marriage ceremony. You get married again. I'm not doing that. I, do I that. don't want to do that. Well, that but is... will you stand up on a altar and give vows? No. He's already done it. He said his piece. Exactly. All I know is Skylar wants to be there. All I know is my actions <laughs> speak Caius louder. Wants to carry a ring. My, my actions speak louder than any damn vow. I already did it. I'm going to argue to say your vows speak louder than your actions. <laughs> what? His words are always loud, so it's hard exactly. to say. All right. Uh, just, just take us out. Oh, 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 if you oh. Like what you okay. If you liked what you heard so far, please make sure you're subscribed on Apple Podcasts and give us a rating and a review. And of course, keep listening and check us out on our Instagram at works.4.s. Don't forget to tell us your story. There's now a Works For Us phone line that you can call to leave us a message with your very own relationship stories. And we're planning to share our favorites on the podcast. You can also ask us for relationship advice. Although I can't stress enough, we are not experts, but we will still take your questions. So if you want to share your story or ask us a question, give us a call on 657-549-2251. That's 657-549-2251. You can also find all of our contact info on our Instagram on at works.4.s. Oh, can I give a highlight and a low light? Of course you can. I'm going to give a highlight and a low light. Roger had to run to a meeting. But my highlight is that it was um, 
our 30th, our 30th Valentine's together and our 24 years married this week. My low light, I got no flowers on Valentine's Day. I got a migraine that lasted two days. So we canceled our anniversary dinner. And now um, that Roger's out of the room, we can be honest. <laughs> totally. And my highlight, uh, my highlight was Caius made me a Valentine's Day card two days later, and it was the sweetest card. And he felt sick over not making me a card because he said, I'm the best mom, the best Valentine. And he felt terrible. He goes, but nobody told me what day it was. I was like, yeah, that's your dad's job. <laughs> Epic fail. But here we are doing a do over. <laughs> and that, by the way, and that is what works for us, my friends. So if you liked what you heard so far, please make sure you're subscribed on Apple Podcasts and give us a rating and, of course, a great review, please. And keep listening. And check us out on our Instagram at atworks.for.us. Also, tell us your story. There is now a Works For Us phone line that you can call to leave us a message with your very own relationship stories, and we're planning to share our favorites on the podcast. You can also ask us relationship advice, although I can't stress enough that we're not experts, but we'll still take your questions. So if you want to share your story or ask us a question, give us a call at 657-549-2251. That's 657-549-2251. You can also find all of our contact info on our Instagram at works.for.us. Hello, it is Ryan, and we could all use an extra bright spot in our day, couldn't we? Just to make up for things like sitting in traffic, doing the dishes, counting your steps, you know, all the mundane stuff. That is why I'm such a big fan of Chumba Casino. Chumba Casino has all your favorite social casino style games that you can play for free anytime, anywhere with daily bonuses. So sign up now at ChumbaCasino.com. That's ChumbaCasino.com. Sponsored by Chumba Casino. No purchase necessary. VGW Group. Void where prohibited by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. Kroger brand products have the great taste you'll celebrate. That's why over 40 million people choose Kroger brand products, making them a true crowd pleaser. And with quality guaranteed, you'll love your choice or get your money back. Score Kroger brand products with savings you can cheer for and great taste you can't resist. Kroger, fresh for everyone. There are some things that are too good to keep a secret. Like how your Amex Platinum card helps you have the perfect trip. I'd like to check into the Centurion Lounge. Or how it seems like you always get those hard to snag tables. Ooh, yum. And how you get the most out of select can't miss events. With access to the Centurion Lounge, Resi Priority Notified, and Amex card member benefits at select events, you'll have to share. That's the powerful backing of American Express. Terms apply. Learn more at americanexpress.com slash with Amex.